you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Hallelujah. Before we get into the word tonight, I'm going to pray. Dearest Jesus, you are still our hope. You are still our Redeemer. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody tunes in, gets a message and a miracle from the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I plead the precious blood of the Lamb over everyone watching, and I declare freedom and healing and deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of John, the uh, 10th chapter, verses 10 through 13. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and kill and to destroy. I come that thou might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose who's own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, verse 14. And uh, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. I know them and they know me. Dobby, God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Dobby, God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you've got two types of of shepherds in the body of Christ. You've got one that will fight to the death for the body. That's my pastor Matthew. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. They would fight with everything that they have in them for the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. They love the body of Christ. They will, if need be, lay down their life like Christ did the church, amen, like he did for the church that he loved. He loved them so much he laid down his life. He refused to live without you and me. He went to Golgotha because he loved us so much he refused to live without us. And he went home and he said, I'm coming back again. He came, he did his work, he went home and he said, I'm coming back again to take everyone that believes in me with me to live with me forever. It's a promise of the blessed hope of the resurrection. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I love how the old saying goes, if I stay or if I go, I'm a winner either way. If I go home to be with Jesus or if I stay here on the earth, I'm still a winner. Either way, hallelujah, it works for me. If the Lord desired to call me home, I would be pleased that I have done what the king required, what the Lord had asked. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I done what the king required of me to do. Now check this out. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There are those who will hear They'll, they'll, they'll get in the pulpit and they'll preach and they'll, yeah, 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 yeah. They'll, they'll shout it with the best of them. But when the time comes, when the, when the hell breaks loose at the door, the hell hounds break loose at the door, hallelujah. And they find their money acting funny. The first thing you do, the church splits because the pastor can't take the heat from hell and he backs down or she backs down because they uh, couldn't stand the heat from hell because they were nothing more 
than a hireling. Are you hearing me? Keep tracking with me now. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said that there's only two types of shepherds in the house of God. Those that will lay down their life and those that will flee for their life. Are you hearing me? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to entitle the message today, Are You a Defender or a Pretender of the Cross? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you a defender or a pretender of the cross? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For me, I will glory in Golgotha's hill. For what was done at Golgotha's hill, I will glory in it. I will give God the glory for dying for me. For laying his life down for me. Because he loved me so much he refused to live without me. But. How many people can say the same? The hour is coming friends. And I can't sugarcoat this. If I do I'm, I'm not a real shepherd. If I sugarcoat it. The hour is coming. The hour is coming and is still yet at hand when the church is going to have to make a decision just like in the book of Acts where they say yes to Christ and lay down their life for him or they're going to reject him and take the mark of the beast. Hold on, y'all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I will glory in the cross. Each day as my redemption song. Hallelujah. I'll sing. I, I will sing, I was trying to sing a song that I, I wrote right there, but I'll, I'll sing it later. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Will you stay faithful is the question that I've got for you today from the Lord. Will you stay faithful? And true to the calling that God has set for you. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Will you stay the course or are you going to give up? We got only two choices. Stay or stand still. Now, I know the Bible says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But a lot of people stand still and they pitch their tent in the valley of the shadow of death. They don't go as far as leaning on the Lord. They don't lean on the everlasting arm. They lean on their own understanding. And that's why a lot of pastors and, and church leaders fall away is because they're leaning on their own understanding and they're not leaning upon the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, they had a... Bunch of people in the like 1400s, 1500s, I don't know how old it was, but they had a lot of people. There was a marauding band uh, like the Moabite army and they was running around with crosses on their chest and killing everybody and, and they were called the Crusaders. Well, wait a minute. Amen, brother. Thank you, Dobby. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Dobby, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But they called themselves the Crusaders. Well, I'm telling you, son, why don't we go on a spiritual crusade? They were demonic. God never told the Crusaders to rise up and kill people in his name. They were demonic. They were not sent by God. 
But that ain't the first and it ain't going to be the last time when somebody kills in the name of God. Jesus said the last days people will come and kill you and think they're doing God a service. Are you breathing? Are you tracking with me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. These are the last of the last days. And it's time we stop playing games with God. It's time we get our oil filled up to overflow. It's time we move with the cross come hell or high water and just carry that cross. The Bible said, Jesus said out of his own mouth, he said, if any man will, let him pick up his cross daily and follow me. Let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me. Paul said, I die daily. It's a daily death to follow Jesus. Are you hearing me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jeremiah 3.15, God said, I will give you shepherds, or pastors as King James puts it, but the original word for shepherd, pastor is shepherd. He said, I will give you shepherds after my own heart that will feed you. But the problem today is in the church, we got too many fat shepherds and underfed sheep. They're living off the land in the that they're living off the blessings of God that come for the sheep, they're sitting within themselves on a word that come from the sheep for the sheep from the Lord, and they're spiritually compacting themselves. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. They're spiritually compacting themselves, and they're getting overweight. We got a lot of. Overfed shepherds and underfed sheep. Is somebody tracking with me tonight? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Paul, God bless you, brother. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me say this. We all know the story of Peter and in Jesus, when Jesus restored Peter, after Peter denied him three times, he said, Simon Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. But that word was a different kind of love. It was Felipe. He said, I can't agape you because Jesus said, do you agape me? Do you love me like I love you? Do you love me unconditionally, Simon Peter? And Simon said, Lord, I Felipe you. I love you, but I love you like a brother, but I, I don't love you like you want me to love you. And he was feeling bad about it. He said, Simon Peter, do you agape me? And he said, Lord, yes, you know, I love you, but I Felipe you. And the, both times he said, feed my sheep. Then he said, feed my lamb the third time when he said, Lord, you know all things. And you know that I Felipe you. And the Lord said, I'll work with it. He said, I know you love me. And I'm, I'm going to increase that love in you. And by the time Jesus had said this to Peter at the boat or at the edge of the water when he was feeding them fish, he took him from the place of feeding the fish to feeding the flock. He, he was uh, taking them from a place of feeding them with fish to feeding his flock. By the time Pentecost had come, he said, I agape Jesus. I love Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. He gave him a deeper love. He gave him a greater compassion for him, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Nikki Cruz once said 
that when David Wilkerson had walked in and talked to him, he said, Nikki, Jesus loves you. He said everything that Nikki, Nikki said he was raised in witchcraft. He was raised in the dark arts. And he said everything was totally disarmed against him. He could not practice nothing with his demonic roots because the love of Jesus messed with his mind in a good way. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Every day for two weeks, David would find Nikki, even during the gang beatings, even during everything else, he would find Nikki and say, Nikki, Jesus loves you. And he said he surrendered his life to Jesus. He even told Nikki one time, Nikki said, I could kill you right now and cut you up in a million pieces. He said, I know you could. And he said, every piece would cry, I love you, Nikki. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, Nikki Cruz. And it was because of David's persistence to obey the call of God on his life that he won the streets of Harlem to Jesus Christ. He won so many people to Jesus because Nikki got saved and God broke up 13 gangs, I believe it was. 13 gangs got broke up because one skinny white boy preacher from the South, hallelujah, from uh, the, from the, um, I can't remember where it's from. It's, um, ah, Starts with a P. Pennsylvania. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. A skinny little country boy preacher from Pennsylvania came and gave the gospel of Jesus Christ to a young Nicky Cruz and won the whole part of Harlem, won that whole city and all the gangs that were there to Jesus Christ and now he's gone home, but he's still reaping the reward. The Bible said, though they're gone, that their works continue on without them. Their works are continuing on. They died in faith, but their works do follow them. They're, they're going after them. Their, their works are still happening today. David Wilkerson, Steve Hill, Billy Graham, they're works do follow them. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. He began to lead the sheep after the encounter with Jesus. John 21 and 15. Yes, Peter left for a season, but he came back because he truly wasn't a hireling. He, some people watching me today, you might have turned your back on your calling. You might have went a different way, but God's calling you back to the kingdom. He's calling you back to preach the gospel tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Even though you went away, God's calling you back tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Neither was David a hireling. Debbie, God bless you. Amen. David was not a hireling. 1 Samuel 17, 34 through 37. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Samuel. Seventeen, verse thirty-seven. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. David said, "Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw." Of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, 
go and the Lord be with thee. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Saul knew the Lord wouldn't with him no more, and he said, I pray the Lord's going to be with you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Saul wouldn't go to battle with the giant because he knew that the Lord wouldn't with him no more. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. The Lord knew that David would go. So God sent David into the battle zone and the Lord gave him victory. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But see, David fought a giant that was not his to fight. David, uh, Goliath was sent to kill David. I mean, D Goliath was sent to kill Saul. Goliath was sent to kill Saul because Saul did not have the Holy Spirit with him no more and Saul, Saul knew it. And Goliath was sent there to kill Saul because the hand of God's grace wouldn't own Saul no more. But David stepped in and fought a giant that wasn't his to fight. But check this out. The Bible said when the relatives of Goliath came back to kill David, when David is now king, there after his destiny, Saul lost his destiny in God, and now David's destiny is in question, and the brothers of Goliath come to kill him. And the Bible said the armor bearer of David rose and killed the giants that were related to Goliath because he killed a giant that was never meant for him to fight. God sent a man to rise up and kill five giants. One giant died by the hand of God through David. But at the same time, when the other giants came to kill David later on when he was king, God sent somebody to rise up and defend him. He's like, you ain't going to have to kill these giants. I'm taking care of these for you. God will raise up. Just like David had an armor bearer that went and killed Goliath. Goliath's giants. His friends, his family, you know, he killed them. But let me explain this to you. Did you know the Bible said that Goliath had an armor bearer? But what happened? What happened to the armor bearer of Goliath? When he saw David, he changed his mind. He said, I don't need no armor bearer. Go home. He sent his armor bearer home, and when he did, he misjudged his opponent and died. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, the Bible shows us he was stunned because the Bible said David ran with the sword of Goliath, came up, and cut off the head of the giant. And killed him, it says. And slew him. So obviously the rock stunned him. And that's why a lot of people in the body of Christ seem to keep going through the same attack over and over. They take out the issue in their tissue. It knocks it down. But they don't take off the head and it keeps coming back up. You've got to take the head off that thing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I was going to keep going, but I heard the Lord say to stop right there. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the grace of God to fight the battle you're going through right now. Some of you are watching me and you're a minister and you're you're like I am sometimes. You're, you feel down and you feel like giving up, but I'm here to tell you that there's some priests with the sword of your enemy in their camp. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The priest came to David and said, wait a minute. Don't be discouraged. We got Goliath's sword in our tent. And these people that are pursuing to kill you ain't nothing to God. If he sent you out to kill a giant, we got your back. God's got your back. Come eat the bread from the table of showbread. It was only allowed to be ate by a priest. Are you tracking with me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He was anointed a king. He was anointed a prophet. 
and he was anointed a priest. Hallelujah. Even in the temple days, that was unheard of. And there was only one other at the time. After David goes home to be with the Lord, there's only one other person that walks in the office of all three, priest, prophet, and king, and that's Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus the Lord, he was priest, prophet, and king. Amen. He's God in flesh. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. And he daily lives to make intercession for you and me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So if you're going through an attack right now, if it's just written on your face, like I heard this morning, it, it, like Brother Morris said this morning, he said there's an attack written all over you, but he said, I cancel the assignment by the blood of Jesus. That's it. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Are you tracking with me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We're more than conquerors through him who loved us. So if you're lost or backslid tonight, pray this prayer of me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross and that God the Father raised you from the dead. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, I surrender my life to you. Fill me with your Holy Ghost that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you prayed the prayer with me, write to me. I want to send you out a certificate of sonship. Our for revival at yahoo.com. Our for revival at yahoo.com. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. If you ain't been filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, I first command total healing in the issues in your tissues. I rebuke every one of them in Jesus' name, and I command a creative miracle from the body part rooms of heaven by his stripes. You are healed in Jesus' name. Now I rebuke every addiction. I command every addiction, receive an eviction by holy conviction in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, Father God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for filling everybody with the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name. Because, Jesus, you are the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And out of their belly will flow rivers of living water. Do it now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Fire. 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 Now, for those that got delivered, I declare that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And according to Nahum 1 and 9, the attack cannot come back. Remember, we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So get out there and testify about what God has said to your life, that God has delivered you, that he saved you, that he set you free, that he filled you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. I love you. God bless you. If you desire to give, you can do so by going to Cash App and going to Cash Tag Hour for Revival. Your love gifts, large or small, keep helping us bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world, not just here, but abroad as well. I love you. God bless. See you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.